and that's where I combine the uh, Park Sig Gen and the. Uh, well, I'll share the screen now. And we'll just show it. Hmm. Can you see the? Do you see my screen? Yeah, it's perfect. I can see it now. Okay, good. So on the uh, left side is the is the prototype from the Park Sig Gen. And next to the Sig Gen is the uh, is the uh, uh, Dwayne's uh, board that he gave me at last year's Four Days in May, which I uh, built up for the uh, step attenuator. And then to the right of that is uh, an older project I did for using the 8307 chip for some well the 8307 experiments to make an RF uh, power meter. <clears throat> and then to the right of that is the Arduino board that I'm running the code for for that. So. I think they work okay. It's, uh, right now, it's about a, a 1 dB accuracy. There is a couple of spots where it gets a little bit more than a dB away from accuracy. But uh, first kick of the can, uh, I'm pleased. The biggest problem will be getting it under one bucket, I think. The other issue, too, is, of course, there's there's <laughs> three, three na well, two nanos and, a, and, a, and, a, and an Arduino board there. So I kind of have to, uh, or two nanos and a uh, 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 or whatever you pronounce it. Try to get that under one, under. I can't see getting it into two. Uh, there's there's uh, there's a little bit of room in the Sig Gen, and there's a little bit of room in the uh, attenuator board for the uh, RF measurement software. But uh, I haven't really tried to implement it yet. All I did give it a little bit of a try, and it didn't work out so well. But anyway, that's the uh, latest project that I'm uh, that I'm working on. And I'll just get out of this. Okay. And uh, let's see. Frank, would you like to uh, uh, go and uh, talk about the uh, direct conversion receiver project? Yes, as soon as uh, I get organized here. Um, okay. Um, where do we start? First of all, uh, I wanted to show a video and um, the recording at the same time of the prototype that uh, Ken uh, was going to show tonight. He sent me the, uh, the video and uh, unfortunately um, we can't get it to share screen here uh, after trying for a little while. I'm very new to get Jitsi, so uh, so I don't know. Anyway, um, he did uh, uh, do a good job uh, on it. Works very very well. It shows that the hand bands are in fact open, and uh, lots of signals uh, on there. Uh, the next level of the project uh, is I think where we left off at the last meeting, which is my my prototype. That was working quite well, and we gave the uh, uh, schematics uh, and some specifications to uh, Kelly, and he has come up with a, uh, a printed circuit board, which uh, is actually the the prototype of the production model that we'll be uh, using. There's ah. on the board. Hang on a sec, Frank. Uh, there's a couple of microphones open, so whenever there's a little bit of a vacuum noise, the screen will shift. So can you, everybody make sure that your microphones are, are uh, muted, please. Sorry, Frank, carry on. Okay. Now, this is uh, designed uh, with a lot of uh, uh, interesting uh, features built into it. Uh, for example, this, uh, let's see if you can see it. Uh, well, I'll take it up. Where's my camera? There we go. Ah. Uh, uh, uh. That's uh, the bandpass filter. And uh, the board uh, can be used for any one of the HF uh, 
hand bands. Um, I'm told it'll even go up to the uh, two, two meter band if necessary. Uh, there's the back of it there. Just by changing the value of the components, uh, you can change the, the band it's on. The original design is for uh, the 40 meter and 20 meter bands and the plan is to provide all of the parts for both of those bands. Now we'll put that one uh, back in and uh, they'll be keyed to put in exactly the right way which I have mine isn't yet. <laughs> And then, if we look over uh, this guy here, that's the uh, built-in VFO. We'll pull him out as well. Same same design, five pins. Uh, a little bit more complex, a little bit more uh, 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 tight in the design. And once again, by changing the value of the components, uh, in this case, uh, it's just the uh, toy that will have to change, and uh, you can get it on various different uh, uh, hand bands. Oh, plus any other band you want to listen to, for that matter, there's the back of it. The, um, it will come uh, with uh, two um, VFO boards and the parts to populate them for both uh, 40 meters and, and 20, 20 meters. <clears throat> now, some of the other features that uh, have been suggested and incorporated is uh, this input here. Here's the, the antenna input for there, BNC connector. But we do have another input for an external uh, VFO, which uh, is initially uh, designed for the park signal generator. And uh, I've used this board and tried the park sim simulator uh, signal generator on it. Uh, it works extremely well and uh, very easy to uh, fine, fine tune. Talking about fine tuning, the three adjustments in the front here as the uh, volume control, fine tuning, and coarse tuning. The course tuning limits will be limited by adjustment to the each end of the band that you want from the lower end to the upper end. And then and, uh, uh, it will, that's the limit of the controls as adjusted on the VFO. Then you can uh, uh, move through that and once you get to the area you're interested in, the, uh, whether it's CW or it's a um, single side band, uh, the sender control will be the fine tuning to uh, tune, it, uh, tune it right in. The next um, feature that's being put on this is uh, a plug. I'm looking at it upside down here. Okay, there's a plug, the plug there. And there's plans that we have uh, or for a future build a thon for a. Uh, counter. So you plug a frequency counter right in and get uh, the, your exact frequency that, that you're on. Now, it could be built a lot bigger than, or a lot smaller, of course, than it is, but the idea of this is to expand it, add things to it, modify it, plug in boards of different values as you want different bands, and make it a base for experimentation. Um, one thing that uh, you might uh, play around with, of course, it is an audio filter. Now, on the demonstration that uh, Ken had uh, sent me, that we can play, uh, maybe I'll try it at the end, but. Um, you'll find that the CW signals were, uh, uh, there was, was a multiple thing that night, and a little hard to distinguish between them. However, there's lots of room on the board that you can incorporate 
a uh, CW filter. Or alternately, you can use the park to CW filter. And this filters uh, right down to 50 hertz. Uh, it was the, the build a phone project in 2006. And uh, here's the, the inside of it. And if there's enough demand, of course, we can always, uh, uh, you know, rebuild it and uh, re reintroduce it uh, as as the uh, additional build on at, at some time. Or the uh, schematics and everything, of course, are are also available to you if you're interested in it. Anyway, that pretty well covers uh, where we are with the build on project. Obviously, it's not going to occur this Saturday as scheduled. But uh, I suspect in the fall we'll be back in uh, back in business again. So if there's any questions, uh, you can unmute the mic and uh, let me know. Just a minute, I'll try this uh, this uh, share screen. It'll either work or it won't work. Mm. Ah. Uh. Ah, here we go. Click on the little video icon. Which video? <laughs> the start stop camera. Just try clicking on that. Where is the start stop camera? <laughs> right in the middle of the screen at the bottom. Oh, the one that is covered up by uh, the thing that says. Uh, uh, Neat Gypsy is sharing a window. That's where it is. Okay, here, I'm going to share my screen. If you want to play the video, just start, just double click it, right? We're looking at your desktop already. Yeah, here it is. There, you should be seeing my desktop now, right? Yeah. I guess okay, are you, seeing my desktop? are you seeing my desktop? I am. Okay, so now I just go over to the start stop camera and I click that. Uh, yeah. It, it, Dave, we can't, seeing, Dave, we can't see what you, you're, you're doing. Uh, it, okay, here we go. Hang on. Yeah, it doesn't show your Jitsi controls, Dave. have to do is either click the because when you're when you share your screen the camera is turned off there's a line through it and I just think you have to just turn your camera back on and it's gonna work well there it is my camera and I turn it no Frank, can't you just double click the file to play it? What what happens? Uh... Yeah, I tried that and it just doesn't play anymore. Oh. Anyway, we played around with this thing uh, for a half an hour before we uh, started this and uh, uh, we couldn't get it to go. So we'll leave it at that and uh, I'll turn it back to Peter. I'd like to thank everyone for organizing it and Peter for jumping in okay thanks Frank uh, does anybody have any questions on the, about the build-a-thon the project or anything like that for Frank okay not seeing anything that's good I guess it's because you explained it so well Frank um, 
Okay, we got two left uh, here. Uh, Al, I see you're here now. Did you want to talk about your uh, your QCX project that you did over the winter? Yes, I will uh, talk about the phaser, uh, the kit that I actually I just started it. I wanted to uh, explain why it was uh, good. Can everybody hear me, by the way? Just raise your hand, Peter. Did you hear me? Oh, good. Excellent. Okay, this one. I'm raising my hand. <laughs> okay. Um, for some reason, I'm seeing an 11 on the screen. I don't know why that would be. Rather than. Anyway, um, I'm going to hold up. I just started on the kit. Uh, one of the things, there are two things that I like about the kit. I'll just hold up the, it's under construction here. I'm on stage two. And one of the things I like about it is that uh, it's divided, divided into five modules. So you do uh, module one, which is the power stage. And when you're finished uh, putting those things in the board, then it tells you exactly how to test it. Uh, there's a very nice troubleshooting guide that says, now, if you didn't get those readings, then try these readings. And if uh, you're not seeing this, then look here, that sort of thing. So I'm actually on, I finished stage two. And um, that was, uh, I think, the day before yesterday. And guess what? I'm not getting the reading that I should uh, on uh, to prove that stage two is functioning. So uh, that's the one that involves uh, using WSJT on uh, on my PC and uh, having an audio out that goes into the phaser. I should have mentioned, I guess, that the phaser is a digital modes rig, all digital modes. Uh, you drive it from WSJT on a, some device like a laptop, I guess. And uh, anyway, I've, uh, I'm uh, on phase two troubleshooting. So it has a separate troubleshooting guide to say, look here, look here, look here. If it's not this, then look there, that sort of thing, which is very nice. I really like building in stages. Um, uh, so anyway, this is quite a nice kit. Uh, over the winter in Arizona, before I had to come home, uh, I built another um, uh, QCX, this one for 17 meters. Uh, I got it. I got, I got it finished except for final testing to see if it's actually emitting RF. I've got it aligned. And I have a loop antenna I want to uh, try out with it. But anyway, I sort of got sidetracked when I wanted to finish this phaser. Uh, so uh, the, other, the other thing that I quite like about the kit is that all the parts come on cards. So here's an example of a card. And there are about, I don't know, seven or eight cards with all of the component numbers and values on the cards. And so like all good kits, it says take an inventory first. And what inventory consists of really is uh, going through all the cards and checking it off against your um, list of components. And it's very, very easy. Now I'm going to just to very briefly show you, I hope through a share screen, what the manual looks like so you can see some of what I'm talking about. And it only took a minute. So. There we go. Can everybody see a myth of something called instruction manual? I hope. Anyway, it's by Midnight Design Solutions, and uh, Dave Benson uh, designed it. And I'll just scroll through a couple of things to show you how the. Uh... Do you want to try sharing your desktop again? There, uh, I'm not seeing anything. You're not seeing anything. Okay. Nope. Okay. Sure. Uh... Well, we're seeing something, but uh, you need to smile. <laughs> hey, Al, when you select the share your screen, <clears throat> a window will pop up, and you need to select which program you're going to share? Oh, it has to be a program. I can't just share the screen as a whole. Yeah, you can share your whole desktop. Absolutely. But you just got to select it. So can, is this, can anybody see this? It's an instruction manual? No? No. 
So basically, okay. when, when you click the share, you, you, the, the box pops up. You have to click on the uh, representation of your desktop, and then the box at the bottom will change to blue that says share. Click that, and you're, you should be golden. Okay. There we go. You got it. Instruction manual for 20 meters? That's it. Okay. So, I mean, it's a, it's, it's pretty standard. Uh, I'll just scroll through it a little bit here. But you see, here's pictures of the parts. And here are the cars that the parts come on, which I quite like. So you can take inventory fairly quickly. And you can find the parts quite easily, and you don't have to... Uh, like, I usually stuff parts in a styrofoam uh, board and, you know, put labels on them and that sort of thing. But this is quite nice. There's the circuit board. And they, you know, give you some recommendations how to do it. So anyway, here's an assembly. It says, you know, do this, do this, do this. Put in the sockets, et cetera, et cetera. And then test number one, basic power. Apply 12 volt power to jack two with a multimeter. You know, check this and so on and then after that's good then you and it says where the components are placed just in case you have trouble finding them on the board and then group two so this is where i am i'm in group two tr switching and uh do not proceed until you see the voltage as well unfortunately i can't proceed because i'm having a problem but anyway that's part of the fun of striking these things down so anyway that's the um that's my uh, explanation of the phaser. It seems like quite a nice little uh, kit, and I'm hoping to uh, use my uh, 20 my mag loop uh, on uh, for digital modes. Any questions? It's Midnight Design Solutions, which is um, the um, chat with the designers guy and two APB, and uh, Dave Benson designed it. So, and it's $55 US. Yeah, it looks pretty reasonable. So you're about halfway through the build, you figure, or further? No, I, I'm, uh, there's, there are five stages to build, and I'm, uh, I've done the first two stages, uh, but I'm stuck after uh, stage two. I have to uh, debug that. There's something wrong with it. Um, I have a feeling with that it might be the audio signal coming out of the my laptop. It isn't going to the right place. That's my suspicion at the moment, but I need to check that out because uh, the static voltages are good. It's the voltages uh, when you uh, press tune on WSJT that are not good. So I have a feeling it's uh, I'm not set up correctly in WSJT or, you know, there's something at that at, at the early stage, but we'll see. Anyway, it's a nice kit. It's a very nicely designed kit. Um, uh, you know, nice to assemble. The parts are close together, but that's part of the fun. Have so, you taken uh, advantage of their discussion group? I see that they have. Uh... Uh, I, yeah, I expect they do have a discussion group. Uh, Chat with the designer certainly has one. Um, I'm going to fool around a bit to see if I can solve the problem. If not, I'll uh, post something on there to uh, explain what I'm seeing, and I'm sure I'll get guidance fairly quickly. Yeah, looks good. Uh, Kitty, Brian, you want to say something? Go ahead. Yeah, I was just going to say that uh, the, uh, the discussion on that thing is actually being held on the, the, the group for chat with the designers. So you can look there for anything you want to talk to them about. Sure. Yeah, thank That's you. That's very active, uh, that uh, particular uh, I.O. group for the phaser. It's really taken off big time. There was another I.O. group that I saw, and I was just doing a quick look here while you were talking out the camp. But there's a ham, I think he's close to Ottawa, who's actually, uh, I think he's replacing him with, uh, the, with an Arduino, also with one cap control for the phaser. So uh, the big mods, I mean, the, the phasers are barely on the air, and already the heavy duty mods are, are starting to uh, fly through for this. Yeah, that sounds good. Yeah, in that, like, I know practically nothing about WSJT. I started, you know, reading the intro, and uh, you have to select the rig that you're connecting to and none is applicable to me until I figure out how to do cat control. But that's down the line, assuming I get everything else working. But it's good to know somebody's doing it. 
Well, that's good. Does anybody else have any questions for, uh, for, for Al? Okay, well, thanks very much, Al. That's good, and uh, sorry for calling to QCX at the beginning there. I remember there was the phaser. Good. And uh, let's see. Eric, you uh, want to chat about something? Yeah, before we get into that, uh, Frank, uh, I don't know if this is going to work, but I'm going to give it a shot, uh, displaying your video. Uh, let's see here. This is pretty crude, but, you know, what the hell? Give it a whirl. Um, can everybody see that? Yeah, yeah, it's on the screen. Quit moving it around, though. I know, I know. I'm trying. I'm an old guy. What can I say? Come on, start. Oh. Okay, so you weren't able to hear the audio there? Well, it was way down, way, way, way yeah. down in the noise. Yeah. All right. Well, anyway, I mean, all it is is, you know, we're just hearing some uh, CW, right, uh, I presume? Is that uh, what that was, Frank? Yeah, that's correct. Yeah, some CW. Yeah. So, anyway, well, I, it was uh, that was the video, right? The, the yeah, 10 seconds? Yeah, everyone, that was uh, Ken's, uh, Ken Chase's uh, prototype of the uh, uh, Build-A-Phone project. All right, sounds good. Um, so, by the way, I am also recording uh, our session here. It's going to be pretty rough. I'm just using my cell phone to record a picture of the tablet. So, eh, at least we do have uh, uh, a memory of this. So, um, okay. <laughs> For posterity. You want to relive this thing. <laughs> okay, well, thanks. Well, Eric, did you want... You want to... Now's a good time to start. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Okay, well, um, as usual, I'm going to try and uh, pass the buck here uh, a little bit. Uh, but uh, what I wanted to talk about, actually, is my video even? Uh, no, I guess I have this reversed, don't I? Uh, dee, dee, dee. Give me a sec. Yeah, there, there you go. Yeah, I just lost it again, didn't I? All right. Um, so, uh, what I want to talk about is W1 REX's uh, uh, Build-A-Thon that unfortunately we're not going to be uh, able to attend physically, but uh, I think we're going to have a virtual Build-A-Thon uh, by the sounds of it. Uh, it's the Glowbug. Uh, has, uh, I don't know, has everybody uh, had a look at uh, QRP.me uh, or uh, seen any of the, the postings about uh, uh, the um, FDIM Build-A-Thon? Eric, can you read me? Yeah, we have. I have. Okay. All right, that's qrpme.com. Uh, oh, qrpme.com. Yeah, there we go. So, uh, as QRP promised, QRPME .com. Dot com. as promised, I have uh, gone right to the source and uh, invited a uh, guest speaker to talk a little bit more eloquently about the, uh, uh, the project. So, uh, Rex, why don't you uh, take it away? Sure. Well, so I'm, uh, I got a really crappy um, internet connection in my workshop here, so I have to dial in by phone. Yeah, you know what? Sounds guys, perfect, uh, Rex. Talk about Billathons, which is, yeah, this is W1REX, Rex Harper from Limerick, Maine. And uh, I, I'm always interested in Billathons. Anyway, uh, just a very quick synopsis. I, every year they ask me, well, this, is, this would have been the 10th year in a row they asked me to do the Billathon at Dayton at FDIM, and I accepted. They asked for some ideas. I pitched them a few ideas, and, of course, they pitched. They, they liked the one that I knew the least thing about, which is vacuum tubes. <laughs> so so I had to come up uh, to speed learning about vacuum tubes, and the one I picked was a two-acorn tube to transmitter build. And I thought that was simple enough that we could actually build it in a build-a-thon session, which usually, usually only lasts about three hours. Um, and I've been struggling. I had a couple of uh, experts who I had in the background who I thought I could just slough off the design work for, <laughs> and they would give me an actual circuit to work. And neither one of them uh, 
was able to do that. So I, it landed back in my lap, and I've been really crunching it for the last couple of weeks. And I got it finally working about, uh, well, uh, about five minutes before I started listening to your conversation at, uh, at a little after eight. So I just got it working on my bench within the last half an hour. Um, cute little thing. I mean, it's a glow bug. It's a QRP glow bug. It's only uh, two acorn tubes running at about 150 volts. Um, very minimum number of components and stuff, but uh, yeah, it's kind of cute, and I think we can pull it off. Uh, since FDIM was canceled, uh, that never really stops me, so I decided I would do a live streaming telethon this year. And so uh, I will be sending kits out, and hopefully uh, people will elect to build it at the same time, and I'll be streaming live out of the uh, public library here in Limerick, which they have a really nice uh, uh, connection I can uh, get into, and I'll be broadcasting the build out of my ambulance, which will be a mobile live broadcasting studio. <laughs> so that's all the news that isn't from Limerick, Maine. Yeah, for those of you uh, who don't know, uh, Rex has quite an awesome uh, ambulance, right? It's not just an ambulance, a ambulance. But uh... well, yeah, it's a it's a ambulance or an ambu camp or yeah. one of the other. I I prefer to call it a ambulance. It's uh it's a, a 2005 uh, Ford F450 ambulance that's been decommissioned and it's now a mobile ham shack. And if you actually uh, want to I see it. it up to- if you want to see it in the flesh, uh, there's an event called LobsterCon that you know all of you must come to at least once in your life. It's like uh, Mecca. <laughs> well, you better hurry, because <laughs> LobsterCon might be canceled this year, too. Um, our governor just extended our, uh, our lockdown for another 30 days, so we won't, we won't even think about being able to motivate until May 15th, and uh, we don't really know what's going to happen this summer. They've already canceled... The New England Convention, they canceled, uh, you know, quite a few events. I don't think there's anything that I know of right now running for Hamfest this summer that I know about here. So, uh, but uh, but if that's the case, then there'll be a LobsterCon next year. But you can go to the, you can search for LobsterCon and find lots of pictures of uh, amateur radio activities. And, you know, it's a, it's a camping weekend that, a lot of people extend it for a solid week. Um, so uh, we have fun, and uh, you get to meet up with a lot of people who have different takes on camping slash uh, QRP fuel operations. There was actually a really good video that was uh, put together uh, from last uh, year's, right? The 2019, I believe it was. Like a three-minute uh, uh, video that's, I think, on YouTube. If I'm not mistaken, I can. Uh, uh, really, uh, I can't. I can't remember who did that. Yeah, but there is one. No. I, I just watched it not too long ago, but uh, I don't yeah. know. I'll, I'll put a link on the uh, if anyone's uh, got their curiosity uh, piqued by it. So, okay. uh, Rex, one more thing: Are you still looking for those uh, RF chokes, or do you think you got it working with the? Uh... Well, um, I I found this. <laughs> I found a solution in some chokes that I bought um, that uh, weren't quite up to, you know, they weren't what I was looking for, but, but I always, I always uh, uh, hedge my bets and I pick stuff that, you know, looks like it may or may not work. And so several of the things didn't, but I, I checked. My problem was I was flying blind on this, on this build because half my test equipment is still in storage. I'm moving out of my old shop. Uh, a quick story, uh, I had to move out of a 1,500 square foot shop that I've been running for uh, QRP and me and for several years, and I had to do it pretty fast, and some friends, a ham friend of mine, my, my only cohort here in Limerick that I, that I uh, have been able to do things with, who happens to be 95 years old, but he's a ham, he's nice, and he's spry, and his wife volunteered, they came down every day and packed up stuff in my shop, and his wife is a mad packer. She doesn't know what she's packing, but she's a mad packer. And he would look in the box after she packed it, and he would figure out what it was, and it marked the stuff on the box. But, of course, he hadn't been in the ham business for a long time, so 90% of the stuff that I had in my shop he didn't recognize. So I've got box after box of written miscellaneous electronic stuff. <laughs> so I went searching today to find uh, some milling chokes. 
uh, archetypes, and I found them, and in the process of finding them, I found my AADE meter, so now I could actually measure some of this stuff, and uh, I found a, a set of chokes that were close to what I was looking for and put them in, and I got the, uh, the prototype up and running tonight. So I've, I've got chokes that I bought from a company down in Florida that look like they'll do the job, so I don't have to have the, the crazy RF chokes that we see from the old days, you know, the, the four, three or four stacked pie sections on a, on a stick. Um, don't need those anymore, I don't think. So I'm good. Do we have any uh, experts on RF chokes on uh, the call at the moment that uh, might be able to lend some assistance if, uh, you know, run into any... Uh, Recording is on. Any uh, issues? Just uh, speak up. Recording has stopped. Oh, recording has stopped. Yeah. You can tell who the uh, where the amateur is in this amateur homebrew group, eh? All right. Well, here, uh, what? Yeah. No. No. Doesn't sound like it. So. Uh, all right. Well. Uh, thanks, uh, Rex, okay. for that. I appreciate the uh, the update. Uh, well, I'll post some links on the uh, site. See, Rex, do you have? Uh, uh, do, do you expect that you'll have uh, room for uh, a whole bunch more Canucks uh, if they're interested? Oh yeah, I I I've only got about forty five people signed up uh, for kits, and I bought. Uh, I bought two for uh, 100 kits. I was being a little optimistic about uh, things. I have a tendency to do that. I, I'm extra optimistic about things that uh, that really sound like a lot of fun. But anyway, I, I have enough to uh, crank out probably, uh, you know, roughly 100 kits. I've got, a, I think, not even 50 sold so far. So there's plenty of room. It'll be, I think it'll be fun. I'm going to... I uh, try to make a, a, in fact, it might actually turn into be a, a, a double bill a thon uh, I might send out uh, the power supplies early. And so we can test out the whole live streaming business and, you know, do something and maybe break the whole thing in half. So, you know, it's not one big marathon session. Actually, that's a really um, good idea so since it's the first about. run, you know. That, that's a great idea because, yeah. yeah, you know, like who knows how it's going to go, right? So. Well, I'll, I'm going to do a couple of tests. Uh, broadcast. I signed up to the British Amateur TV Club, uh, so I have the streaming portal that I can use. Uh, that also has the feedback from builders and stuff. We did this. I did this once before back in 2011 at Dayton. I had a, what I call the bill along, and we broadcast it live out of the media room in the hotel. And we had about, I think we had 18 people in the hotel and had another 40 people around the world tuning in. He built something that was really simple. It was a no solder kit. You know, it went along pretty quick. But it was kind of kind of fun. But right after that, uh, Steve Fletcher, um, who was the multimedia whiz at at uh, FDIM, he resigned and dropped off the face of the earth. And after that, they never did any media stuff again over there. Um, so uh, I never tried doing it again. But I've just bought a whole bunch of stuff, and I'm going to operate or outfit the ambulance as a mobile studio so that I can go up and link into the library anytime I want and do a, a broadcast. All right. A live feed. Yeah. I'm have fun. I used to be a video guy a long time ago. <laughs> long time ago. Before I got into computers. Well, actually, when I got into computers and uh, before I got into amateur radio. So this will be fun. All right. Looking forward to it. By the way, you want to talk about RF ch chokes? Uh, give me a send me an email. I know a bit about power electronics uh, transformers, but um, I might be able to. I'd like to talk to you about RF chokes if you want to hit me up with the oh. uh, email afterwards. I'll I'll link you guys together. Okay, link okay. Li link me together. Okay, that'd be great. That'd okay, be great. all right. Uh, and you can if if you go on my website www.qrpme.com, uh, there's a top link on the left hand side that shows the billathon, and you can go in and and uh, uh, get the information about it. And I'm going to post them now. I only had an artist <laughs> an artist rendition because I never had a built one, um, but I now have a. Uh, I took a uh, heat kit laboratory generator that was a basket case, and I stripped it all down and took the chassis out and used that to build a breadboarding tube project board. 
uh, which is a, an interesting build all in itself. You know, I've got a, I, I use the transformer out of the, the heat kit and I use the OB2, OB2 uh, regulator tube and I built the power supply that goes on this thing and it's uh, the places where there was all kinds of rough enclosures and stuff. I've got uh, wood, you know, pieces of wood down so that you can just quickly throw stuff together and you got a, a stiff power supply to, to run vacuum tubes and uh, pretty cool. So I'll be posting some pictures of that up in the next, uh, um, they might actually go up tonight later on, but uh, I'm going to do some serious tweaking tonight and see if I can't get all the, the uh, parts and stuff shuffled out so that I know exactly what I got to start ordering. Uh, by the way, Rex, I don't want to like, uh, you know, load this up uh, too much, but uh, remember when I was uh, in your shop uh, last uh, summer after Lobster Con and you, yep. gave, you gave me a few bits and pieces for one person who uh, uh, paid up for the uh, O-Scope Fun uh, kit, and, but he couldn't attend. Do you recall that? Yeah. Uh, yeah, well, that fellow yeah. Hassan who just uh, offered the RF choke uh, assistance there, and that's oh. that's the fellow. So, uh, so I have a few okay. of the bits and pieces that you gave me, but there's a few more things. I, do you still have uh, some some of the O scope? Uh, like I, I've got the the the, the little um, uh, oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, scope that uh, that's uh, his. That's uh, Hassan's. But uh, there, I think the the, um, the PCB or components or something like that. So if you have still some of those yeah, kicking around, the, the kits are still the, the kits are still active on the uh, on the website. In fact, I have a distributor who's interested in actually selling that as a product all built, and I've made a uh, a surface mount version of that that can be assembled. But I haven't got to the assembly part of it yet. So, All right. Well, uh, we'll do it. Off yeah, I still have those kits that are active. Yeah, we'll do it yeah. offline. But uh, just to complete uh, Hassan's uh, uh, okay. little buildathon kit, uh, we'll talk about that afterwards. So, but anyway, okay. Yep. Appreciate your okay. time, uh, Rex. Yeah, appreciate. Okay. Yeah. All right. I gotta go cook some supper. All right. Take care. <laughs> okay. See you, Rex. Thank you for letting me pop in on you. Yeah. No. Appreciate it. Have okay. a good night. All right. Have a good we'll night. Do it again another time. Yeah. For sure. Okay. All right. All right. Bye. Bye. All right, uh, uh, um, Peter, back to you, I guess, uh, the MC. <laughs> MC, I don't know. Okay, well, thanks for that. Uh, yeah, I, I, it's good to hear you still have lots of kits. I thought, he, I thought Rex only had maybe a couple spots open, and that was it. So it sounds like he's got quite a few uh, kits available. It'd be interesting to see how uh, an online build-a-thon would go. I can't see. You know, it would be interesting to see how it goes, that's for sure. Okay, that's pretty much it for the, the uh, a formal, for lack of a better word, formal of guys who were going to present something. So I'm just going to throw it out to the floor to see if anybody has any questions, comments, wants to do a show and tell, or or what what have you. Um, there's uh, about 17 of us online, so probably use that little, you know, raise your hand icon down the bottom left hand side of your screen would be a good way to let me know that you want to speak, and uh, and then I can turn it over to you. So I guess with that. Is there anybody who wants to make a comment, uh, question, etc.? Brian, go ahead. Brian, can you hear me? Go ahead. Brian's mic is off and is sorry. Yeah, uh, too many icons on the screen. Sorry. Yeah, I was just thinking that uh, Rex's thing would be a nice companion for our receiver when uh, everything's ready to go both ways. I hadn't thought of that. That's a uh, that's a really good idea, yeah. and that would satisfy. Because we talked about doing a two project, uh, well, a number of years ago, and I think we came close to actually getting one going. And uh, maybe Frank might remember. I guess it was probably I can't remember if it was a receiver or a transmitter that uh, we were thinking about doing way back when. I think Gord was probably the leading that charge there, and I guess the tubes were a bit expensive, and we kind of abandoned the project. Was it a receiver or was it a transmitter, Frank? Do you recall? Uh, yes. <laughs> yes, it, uh, it was to be a transmitter. And the problem we ran into was a balance between uh, the power output and the uh, volt. I think Frank's had uh, some... we lost you there, Frank. Yep. You, you're screwed. Bandwidth issues. So what killed them? 
Yeah, we kind of lost you there, Frank. Your signal's been kind of going red and blue, or red and uh, yellow, and then green again. But uh, I think we caught the gist there. There was a problem with the output power or something like that with it. Okay. Um, somebody else raised their hand, but there was no name uh, attached to who wanted to speak. So I guess uh, whoever it was, do you want to jump in? Does somebody else have a comment or a question? It was probably me, Peter, uh, Marty, and uh, I, uh, I noticed that Brian's mic wasn't on, and I, I was just making a comment about that. I don't know if you've been watching the screen there, but Dave and Kevin both wanted to uh, talk. Yeah, I noticed that. Okay, thanks, Marty, and good seeing you again, by the way. Oh, yeah, and there's Dwayne's in there, too. Hold on, Dwayne. Uh, uh, Kevin, go ahead. Okay, yeah, no, I was um, I was looking at something. I think I mentioned this maybe a couple of months ago or whatever, but I had sent an email to the guys on the, the Ham Radio Workbench podcast. They have this uh, thing they call the Benchduino project. Well, I, you buy the board, whatever. But it's like a, a prototyping board for Arduinos and Raspberry Pi Zeros. And it's got an LCD display. And actually, here, let, me, let me see if I can share the screen here. I've got the web page up. And I want that one. So we do that. Okay. So this is, uh, everybody see that? Yep. Okay, good. All right. So anyway, it's like, and it, it's not cheap. It's like, I don't know, I think it's 60 bucks or something, but um, it, you've got everything you need to prototype projects. It, you can put like an XP transmitter on it. You can put a LCD display, an OLED display. Um, you know, it's got a power supply built in. You've got, it's got level shifters for three volts to five volts, some buttons, LEDs, and a whole bunch of, and an encoder and a bunch of jumpers to hook up anything else you want. And I thought that looked like a pretty cool thing. And they, but they say they don't ship to Canada. Um, so anyway, I sent them an email and I said, well, if there was a few people that wanted to buy one of these, would you would you consider your changing your policy and send us a shipment? So anyway, they they kind of sounded interested, but then they we haven't ironed out any details. And I just wondered if anybody else is maybe interested in, in getting something like this. And the way it works is you have the base board, and then there's a, like a daughter board that you plug a CPU into, like a Raspberry Pi Zero or Arduino, or I think they've got one for the Beagle. If I'm no, it's right there. A pick 40 so you can do pick or the adafruit feather um, boards so anyway that that was just something i came across that looked kind of interesting because i'm forever doing this when i'm playing with an arduino you need a power supply you need an encoder you need a couple push buttons anyway it, so, it looked interesting kevin i, I know this is going to make dave shake his head but uh, i actually have the uh, I, I picked one of these up in dayton last year uh oh so 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 give us a review. Oh, oh, it, you know what? Uh, it, it looks great in the bag that I brought back from Dayton last year. You know, it's it's beautiful. But uh, no, actually, they were they were just they didn't have the um, uh, all the com the uh, the components. Uh, so what they were doing is like for I don't know, it was cheap, ten bucks, fifteen bucks. I don't know what PCB, some standoffs, whatever, whatever, and. Uh, I think they also have a, offer a link to the uh, bill of materials that you can get, uh, you know, you just basically shoot it off to Mouser or DigiKey and, uh, you know, voila, all of the bits and bobs that you need uh, show up. Uh, well, whenever they do show up these days, I guess. But uh, anyway, so, yeah, that's my story. Uh, not much, but it did impress me, the little dog and pony uh, that they, uh, guys at the uh, Ham Radio uh, Workbench podcast, which I listen to pretty much religiously uh, every time it comes out. Uh, but yeah, they did a good job of uh, selling it up uh, at the uh, at the show, but um, yeah, I, I don't see why they wouldn't uh, ship to Canada. Does it, does it look well? It says on their website they don't, but anyway, yeah. uh, are they, uh, do, do they? Is it a decent quality board? Yeah, yeah. I mean, everything is. I mean, they, this this is not obviously their first uh, project. They uh, they have quite a bit of experience and uh, a pretty good following. I think uh, they they you know they talk it up as you've probably heard on maybe some of their shows. Uh, uh, but using it, it's a work in progress, I think, and uh, I, I think they've actually uh, done at least two iterations of the board, making some improvements uh, on it, as far as I know. Uh, so, so yeah, yeah, I, I think uh, you know, for prototyping, it looks like uh, 
you know, a, a, a good, you know, a thing to have on the bench, right? Uh, it's like you said, all in one, uh, you know, very flexible, uh, lots of different uh, I/O uh, for anything you'd want to do with it. Basically, uh, I think at this point. Okay. All right. Anyway, that's my two cents worth. So. If you want to ship stuff to Canada from the U.S., what you should do is is uh, think about cross border pickups. What you do is you uh, register with them. They give you a, a post office box in Niagara Falls, New York, and the U.S. guy shipped there, and they send it to a place in Mississauga, and you can pick it up there. That's how it works. And you pay a fee for that, but it's not very much. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I'll yeah, okay. second I'll, that. I'll look into that. Yeah, I've been using them for years too, and uh, they're really good. You know, even they lost a parcel, and they reimbursed me totally for uh, the, the 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 missing parcel. So they're good good guys. Oh, okay. Good to know. Okay, thank you. Anyway, that's my two cents. Next. Okay, well, thanks, Kevin. That's interesting. And I remember stopping by their booth at Dayton. Uh, it's always interesting to chat with those guys. Okay, uh, let me see. We've got Dave. Dave is up next, and there's two other guys uh, that want to speak as well. One, it's not identifying who it is, so we'll come to that. But we'll let Dave go uh, next, and then we'll carry on from there. How you doing, Dave? Good. I just want to show you. <clears throat> Something here, I've been playing around with um, <clears throat> Jitsi. Can you see this? Yep. Okay, so if you go down in the bottom right-hand corner where it says more options, it's three vertical dots. If you click on that, it comes up with a whole bunch of options. The very last one is view shortcuts. And this pops up, and they're all keyboard shortcuts you can use. And I think someone mentioned when Frank was trying to switch between um, camera and full and a full screen, you could press the D key. So if you want to switch between uh, cam um, your screen, sharing your screen and back to video, you can just press the D key. And there's a whole bunch of other cool little things you could do here um, on the video. You could raise or lower your hands with R. The key thing is spacebar. That seems to be um, a common push to talk. So you could just hit spacebar to mute and unmute your microphone. So I'm going to press D now. If I, it's going to take me back to uh, there. So I'm back to video now, right? To, to my uh, camera. So the D key works. So as I go along, I'll, I'll keep adding to the documentation for all these little things. Is there, a, is, is there a C key for clean up your room? What is that all over the floor? Oh. <laughs> well, that's a good thing, Dave. For the uh, to add in to uh, that document, that would be good. And another thing that would be handy, and I just did it myself. Um, if you go over to those, those the same area that Dave was talking about, the three dots. When you click on there, go up to settings, and then in settings, go to profile. And in profile, you can enter in your display name. So that would certainly help out when you raise your hand. I know who is raising your hand. <laughs> so if you can do that for the next time, anyways, or you can do it now as we're chatting. It would certainly help out when we want when you raise the hand so we can call on who's next. Uh, Peter. Yeah, Peter. If you go up to the very first option, you you click more options, and the very first one you click on that, that takes you right in into your profile. Oh, okay, I don't see the more options, but I'll take your word for it. Well, it's huh. very it's the very first. It's the very first. Uh, Selection. If you select it, it'll take you into settings, and you could change your profile right there. Okay, good. All right, that's great. Thanks, Dave. Now, somebody else had raised their hand, and I don't know who it was. Um, somebody want to jump in who had a question? Okay. I thought there was two. Actually, I thought there was two more that wanted to speak. But, I, have uh, name, but I don't have a question. Michael, I don't have a question. It's okay. All right. 
Okay, is there anybody else? Any comments, questions before we go? Uh, as far as this video goes, oh, Al wants to speak, but as far as this video goes, do we have a uh, place where we stream uh, homebrew videos anywhere, officially? Yeah, I thought uh, I thought uh, somewhere was uh, reserved, but we'd have to talk to uh, Joe. I think Joe did something, but I can't remember where it was. The, do you remember Frank or Dave? Like there isn't a YouTube channel, I suppose, or anything, is there, uh, for the group? Yeah, Joe well, said YouTube. And Joe said it up, but I can't remember the name of it. Now that you mentioned YouTube, I think that's exactly where it is. And that when we did our first online one with uh, with Pete out there on the left coast, that's where that video is. Okay. Okay. Uh, so S A A L K. I couldn't quite catch it. Uh, go ahead. Yep, somebody raised their hand there to speak. Go ahead. SK, go ahead. Unmute your mic and then you're ready to go. That's no, a silent there we key. Go. Then we got it. Didn't want to yeah. click through for a second. Uh, I put some questions on the IO group and you guys replied to, we'll give you some answers and I tried to thank you, but I can't reply to replies for some reason. Uh, apparently I'm not set up, so anybody that's replied to my questions, thank you. Uh, the other thing I have is the uh, I have a become the recipient of some Drake equipment, which uh, along with the Heathkit uh, thousand watt amplifier and a, and a can ten a dummy antenna in transformer oil. Uh, how do I check the oil if it's PCB laden or if it's uh, still good, or do I even worry about that? Toss it. Well, I guess if the can seal is probably still good, and generally speaking, they usually use mineral oil, uh, I believe, in these cans. So I'd be surprised if there's PCBs in it, but I suppose one never knows. Yeah, it's transformer oil from the 70s, so it might still have PCBs in it. Then I, yeah. Take it to the hazmat place and then start over. Yeah, that's what I thought. Shame to throw it out though, because it's like an antique now. Okay, Brian, go ahead. Yeah, I just had to. Uh, uh, just throwing this out here, it, probably right here, if you took it to the hazmat, but if you kept the lid and then just got another paint can, you could probably still use the lid and the. And the Resistors, maybe, but that's an idea. Yeah, I don't think it's yeah then I guess it becomes an issue of how do you watch it and all that kind of stuff. But I think I don't think you can really harm yourself too too much uh, messing around with it, but unless you drink it. But uh, I wouldn't bathe in it. But anyway, don't take that with me to vodka. Yeah. I used to work with a guy who came from Wales in the mines, and they said they used to use PCBs to wash their hands when they finished the day. He used to work. Anyway, he's still alive today. Anybody else have uh, comments, questions? So how did uh, how, how was the experience? Uh, what did everybody think? Yeah, I think it went well uh, for the first go. I yeah, I don't see a lot of thumbs up. Don't see any thumbs down. So that's a good start. From my perspective, I think it went. Uh, it went. Actually, probably went better than I expected. There was about. Uh, I think the maximum we got up to about eighteen people uh, checking in, and I acknowledge Al wants to speak. Um, and uh, there's been the odd little time lag that uh, that happens, but nothing that really made it uh, all that uh, erroneous to uh, to follow along. Um, maybe some improvements going forward. I, I notice in some cases, uh, guys that are in a room that's well lit seems to work bit better for for uh, the video experience. So I'll keep that in mind. And of course, muting the mics is important. Uh, Al, you have some comments? Yeah, Peter, uh, 
the experience uh, this time was extremely good compared to my previous experiences with Jitsi. And the big difference is I'm using my wife's laptop, which uh, has more memory and is faster. Um, my laptop uh, that I've been using the last couple of times with uh, pretty horrible results is uh, maxed out at four gigs and it's about a dozen years old. So I think the lesson there is I should use uh, uh, Jen's laptop and I'm going to try uh, Linux uh, next time. So um, anyway, thanks for your information about Jitsi, but uh, it seemed to be my end with the laptop that was the, the real issue. I don't know if everybody else has a good experience, but we had a park executive meeting last night and everybody seemed to be complaining about it. So maybe they all have old laptops or we just had uh, poor connections overall. Okay, thanks for that uh, for that info, Al. Yeah, I'm sure it, it bandwidth is everything. <laughs> That's for sure. And uh, SK, I'm sorry, I forgot the name, but uh, go ahead. I see you put up your hand again. Yeah, I'm just going to mention that the executive meeting last night, we had a, a very piss poor connection. We're going to switch to Zoom next time and see how that works out. We didn't have my start with. Uh, okay. If it's a soccer club. I mean, I. Yeah, I, I I use both. I use uh, I use Zoom for my guitar online guitar lessons, and it works okay. No work, no no issues. I guess the nice thing about Zoom is you can record the you can record the uh, session, and it goes to your laptop. But then again, it's a professional account as well. But uh, okay, uh, a couple got more guys want to speak. Uh, Pablo, you're up first. Welcome aboard. Hey, thank you. Can you hear me? Yep. Yes, we can. No problem. Okay, thank you so much. Uh, okay, this is Pablo, uh, Victor Alpha 3, Hotel Delta Lima. I live in Aurora. Uh, this is my first time uh, meeting you guys. Um, it was very nice uh, to participate and uh, see what you guys are doing. I am, like to build some stuff myself. You can see down there an antenna and a rotor for a satellite, you know, uh, doing all kind of things like that. That That is controlled by an Arduino. Uh, but just simple stuff. I never build a radio or anything like that, like you guys do. And this is why uh, this is why is, uh, I am interested into into this group. I saw there are many other projects uh, online, like power meters and stuff like that. Uh, something called Radio Berry. I don't even know for that for what is the purpose of that. Uh, really impressive stuff uh, that you can build. So um, yeah, I just I wanted to say that, and also um, uh, in terms of these on the tool that we use, um, I use Webex for work, and I use uh, Zoom with my family and friends, and um, it seems to be I think those two seem to be working better than this one, right? I never used Jitsi before. It seems to be um, like I, I don't know, like like uh, resource uh, intensive on the computer because it runs on the browser. I'm not sure of that, but it's not the same experience. So, anyways, th those are, those are my comments, and uh, and very pleased to meet all of you. Okay, thank you so much. Thanks, uh, Pablo. Thanks so much for uh, Pablo, and uh, maybe uh, when we get over the, this this uh, pandemic uh, crisis, uh, you'll come out to uh, the, the regular uh, homebrew meeting that, that we hold on a monthly basis, and the information there is on the uh, Peel Amateur Radio Club uh, website. Uh, I think you are a member of the uh, groups IO, are you not? Yeah, I'm. I'm I meet you guys uh, through the groups IO. Uh, I, because yeah. I live in Aurora, I'm a member of the York Region uh, Amateur Radio Club in here, and I go to do their meetings in in there. But of course, uh, I have no problem to go uh, to to your meetings uh, when when these are are again scheduled. I was looking forward to go to Amex. I, I never been there before, and uh, fortunately, you know, all this happens, and now we have to be all home, right? That's right. Anyway, okay, well, that's good. Well, thanks again for uh, for joining us tonight. Now, a couple of guys had raised their hands, but there was no names attached to them, so I'll just open it to the floor. Who's, who would like to go next? Uh, okay, Dwayne. Uh, good evening, Dwayne. How are you? Hello, Peter and everyone. Uh, too bad we can't make it at FDIM this year, so uh, this is a nice chance yeah. to just yeah. check in and see uh, how everyone's doing and uh, and hope to be able to go and uh, check in again one of these times. 
Oh, thanks for uh, for dropping by, Dwayne. Yeah, so looking forward to four days of May and catching up with a couple of things with you this year. But I guess we're going to have to hold off and uh, and uh, we'll we'll get uh, caught up doubly so at uh, next year's four days in May. Um, is there anybody else uh, would like to uh, jump in? That, so yeah, I'm just going to mention something uh, that in our discussion here, I, I think we should continue. <clears throat> uh, my opinion is to continue using Jitsi. I think it's been working reasonably well, but a couple things. Uh, um, I think uh, using the dedicated program uh, might be a little bit more robust than the in browser. That's just a hunch. Um, uh, I haven't. I, I'm using a tablet actually right now, um, and I've had no problems whatsoever. Uh, you know, it's a dedicated app on the uh, on the uh, the Android uh, device. So uh, that's one thing. And you know, using I guess the most up to date uh, CPU that you've got in your arsenal would also probably help. So those two things. You know, you download the app. Uh, you know, I know it's convenient to do it in the browser, but uh, uh, like I said, you just might have better luck uh, all around if we uh, all use the dedicated program instead. So it's my, 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 my thought well, anyway. I hadn't thought of that about using the dedicated app. I've used the app on my phone, but I haven't on the uh, laptop. I've just used the in the browser. But uh, yeah, you're right. Next time uh, I try, we'll try it that way and see see how that works out. There is no, um, there's no dedicated app for the PC. Oh, it's no? It's always browser-based. Oh. It's our... our our, our RTC, the application you're looking at is the server. You can build your own server. It's not a client. Yeah. Not a client. Uh, okay, I thought it was a, uh, a client app as well. No, okay. Never mind then. Yeah, I didn't find any. Well, yeah. Sorry, guys, to interrupt. I didn't find any or to install on the PC, so I went with the browser. Uh, version and uh, be kind of uh, intensive using the browser for this. Yeah. Well, I guess then the the, the maximum CPU power that you've got uh, and or tablet. Uh, like I said, I've had good luck with things like Zoom and uh, Jitsi on a tablet. So. Okay, that'll be interesting to try. Okay, we've got a couple more guys wanting to speak up here. Uh, one was, I can't think of the name, uh, V3ALH, is it? Yeah, it's Al here. Uh, just one comment on that. when I uh, oh, wow. okay. when I loaded up the uh, the software, uh, my uh, Windows 8 machine would not handle it, and they told me to download Chrome. And uh, with Chrome, it's working beautifully. So maybe that's the solution for uh, some other people. I think Chrome and Chromium or whatever it is uh, is called. They're the only two browsers that Gypsy uh, recommends. And I, from experience, Firefox definitely doesn't work. But uh, okay, and. Uh, Kevin, uh, you're up next. Yeah, just to add to the discussion, yeah, I, I'm using Chrome as well, and I'm just checking on the task manager. Al, you were talking about four gigs of memory. Well, mine's chewing up five and a half gigs, sitting here on Chrome and 30% of my processor. So, and it's a quad core. I mean, the laptop's not new, but it's like maybe seven years old. So, it's not not the newest on the block, but it's uh, it is chewing up a bunch of memory, but. But it's been stable. It's been working good. Except, don't try the uh, blur my background beta function there. It uh, that doesn't work yet. <laughs> sh that's why I disappeared there for a few minutes. I tried to fix that. So anyway, that's okay. It. Thanks, Kevin. Uh, okay, thank you. Uh, Dave popped up a note here saying that we were talking about the uh, YouTube channel. Uh, the YouTube channel that we have recorded up there so far is called Park Live Stream. So okay. you may want to take a look up there. Park live stream. All right, maybe thanks. Put that and by the way, Eric, you need to change the name uh, on your profile. There's a, there's a whole bunch of cookie name, uh, letters and numbers behind your name that doesn't make sense to me. Uh, I tried to do that before uh, I uh, started, yeah. but it uh, wouldn't let me. So, all right, do better next time. All right. <laughs> okay, anybody else like to uh, comment, question? Frank's got his hand up, Peter. Oh, well, does he? I didn't see it. Go ahead, Frank. Yeah. Um, just one comment about my uh, experience uh, this evening. I, uh, either I have a very poor connection or this computer maybe is just on the verge. Uh, but uh, a lot of people froze from time to time and a couple of screens just blanked out. But, uh, and also I had a 
problem apparently towards the end of my presentation. Uh, so anyway, that's the comments there. I'm going to have to upgrade the uh, hardware at this uh, UTH. Well, I think, um, uh, just a sec. Uh, Frank, I have not, like everybody's flipping, like the, I can see the icons for signal strength quality for each uh, participant. And most of them are going from green to amber to red and back and forth flipping around. But yours seems to be fairly steady lately uh, at the red. So I don't know if you're close to your router might make a better difference, all those kinds of things. But uh, I have noticed, like you say, a lot of the guys are cycling through the green and ambers and and back into the reds. So who knows? Anyway, uh, Al, you wanted to say something. Yeah. No, anyway, uh, I noticed myself that uh, yeah, it's sitting in the red. So uh, that's probably uh, just not enough horsepower at this end. But anyway, I enjoyed the, uh, the group, and uh, we'll do it again. Okay, thanks, Frank. Al, go ahead. Yeah, I'm. Uh, I'm using. I was using Chrome as well, and I'm using Chrome on this machine. But I was wondering if uh, anybody has an experience with the uh, Jitsi server. I was wondering if uh, having our own Jitsi server would somehow uh, make the overall experience better. Myself, I have no experience with that sort of thing. Uh, anybody else? Well, when you finish building your kits, I guess you could uh, figure that one out, Al. <laughs> Hassan, you got a comment? Yeah, so if you use your browser, it's going to use software rendering, so it's going to be very CPU intensive. The only way to get uh, video acceleration is to use the app somehow. I, I used to work in video processing, and this was my day in, day out job, trying to get this thing, get, get video conferencing and stuff to work. Um, browsers will never, will always use software rendering, so they're all, it's always going to be very slow. I did see that there's a low bandwidth mode you can use, which might actually make it faster. Oh, I guess that's, I'll make a note there and take a look into that and just see what we can come up with for next time. Low bandwidth mode. Okay. Thanks, Hassan. So I guess that's another oh, vote for using a, an app rather than uh, the browser, right? Well, if you're using an app, then you got to be in your, an Android or something, right? Right, yeah. Android, iOS, whatever. But, uh, you know, most of us have a tablet, right? right? So. Wow, sounds Some exciting. Dog. <laughs> yeah. Okay, Kevin, go ahead. No, I'm just looking, Hassan, you were mentioning about the uh, rendering. In, uh, in Chrome, under settings, there's a setting that turns on hardware acceleration. So if you have it, and mine's turned on, and I've had a you know good experience other than me playing, pushing buttons and messing around. Um, mine's been really good, and my hardware acceleration is turned on in the browser, so I don't know if that has anything to do with it, but that's one of the settings you can check off in Chrome, so just wanted to add that in there. Okay, that's another thing to check. Okay, thanks, uh, Kevin. Uh, yeah, Kevin, oh, Kevin, you want to speak again? Somebody else has a mic. Oh, no, it's closed now. Okay, go ahead, Kevin. No, that's okay. I just, I accidentally uh, hit it again. Sorry. Go ahead. All right. Okay. Uh, yeah. uh, anybody else? Uh, me, You've Michael. done it again. Michael, a question. Please go ahead, Mike. Go ahead, Michael. Uh, should I be seeing on the right-hand side with all the pictures, should I be seeing people's names? I can see yours, but I can't see anybody else. I just see pictures. Uh, like I was mentioning earlier, if you go into the uh, those little three dots on the right-hand side, uh, and uh, you can go into settings, and then up to settings, you'll see profile. Now, Frank had a, or not Frank, Dave had a shortcut to do that. Anyway, settings, profile, and then in profile, you can set your name. I did that, but I can't see my name in my own picture. Maybe that's because I know who I am. <laughs> it may be. If you hover well, actually, over when it. I have the icons here, I don't see... You know, if... When it's just sitting there like that, the, the names generally don't come up until somebody speaks, I think. And or if I hover my mouse over 
over uh, the picture. If you set your name in the profile, then I'll uh, I'll see that. That works. That works. Yeah. Well, that's good. Actually, there's one state. There's a SF Simon. Simon is sitting in the in the back there listening. And who else? Brian. Okay. Anybody else have any comments? Questions? Just want to uh, thank you very much, uh, uh, Peter, for the chair of the meeting at the uh, notice, and I think you did a fantastic job. Thank you very much. <laughs> I, I thought you were going to fly. I was hoping to be fired. I mean, uh, oh, I might not do this. Oh, shoot. No, no, this is a lifetime position, <laughs> Peter. Lifetime. I, I think the good news is I thought, what, I th I thought it worked well this way. Uh, like I say, I think the key here is like the it also is set your profile name so that when you raise your hand, your name comes up, and then the the moderator will will know right away who's who wants to uh, speak, and then it can make a list and away we go. And I think it worked out well. Like I said earlier, there was I think 18 was the max we got to. It seemed very manageable. I'm not sure what it'd be like when you get uh, quite a few more and uh, they start to run off the screens, or maybe the pictures get a little bit smaller so you can keep track of everybody. Uh, Dave, you wanted to make a comment? <clears throat> yeah. Um, regarding performance, I think it's it's a trade-off. You have to look at ease of use versus taking a performance hit. So with all the other clients, all the other uh, products, you have to install a client. So once you start installing a client, is are people going to have problems getting that client running, getting it working with the video and audio with this? It's plug and play. You just go go to a website, turn it on, and there's no client to install. It just runs. So from a security perspective, this makes a whole lot of sense for especially when you know there's not a lot of system ex expertise or experience who could troubleshoot a, a system their own system problem this makes it's it's very very easy to run and not only that it's free True. It's unlimited right okay I'll zoom and maybe some other ones are free for the next month or two but going over the long haul uh, this one's free and everybody else wants to charge if you want to get something for our uses uh, zoom wouldn't work because we would be limited to 40 minutes and, you know, there's, going down the road, and so. there's also documented uh, sketchy uh, privacy issues with Zoom too, right? Yeah, you can go online if you want to read up about that. I mean, who wants to crash this? The Barry Homebrew Group? <laughs> exactly. Actually, I just wrote up a report. So I've been using Zoom lately, and after 40 minutes, we get this message saying uh, the administrators added more time. So they're making it free for now. Oh, that's what I'm saying. Uh, as, as, as saying it, it's free for now, but going forward, might as well get used to the one that we, that's free in my opinion. Okay, well, that's good. Anybody else? Oh, I guess that's it then. Well, good seeing everybody again and having a chat. And uh, I guess uh, maybe we'll do this again next month. Uh, for all in, I guess we can make comments uh, on the group's I.O., but uh, maybe we'll try this again next month. So I guess with that, uh, we'll we'll say uh, seven three. Good night, and uh, catch you guys later. All right. Thanks, Peter.